it's not seen here. Now, after using the Galaxy Z Flip 3 for about five months now, the one thing that kept coming to my mind was this simple statement that I feel rounds up the Z Flip 3 pretty perfectly. And that statement is, I think that the Galaxy Z Flip 3 is the reason that we take smartphones more serious. Because when you think about it, foldable smartphones are a pretty new concept in a mobile tech industry that's filled with one dimensional smartphones. And if you look around you, you will notice that everyone has either an iPhone, a Pixel, or even a one dimensional Samsung phone. And as a society, we have gotten so comfortable with the idea of a one dimensional smartphone that we see no other ways to improve from a hardware standpoint. And this is the reason why when foldable smartphones came into the game, they were seen as nothing more than an accessory to show off how cool or rich you are. They were never looked at as anything more. And it also hurt that when the first Galaxy Z Flip came out, it was nowhere near the top tier flagship phones when it came to things that people really care about like software, durability, and most importantly, camera quality. Like when it came to durability, you couldn't even press hard on a screen or drop the phone. It would instantly break and your $1,500 would go to waste. And the device wasn't even dust or water resistant, so you wouldn't even be able to take it to a place like the beach where there's sand or even accidentally spill some water on it because again, it would instantly break, resulting in your money being wasted. And I think the durability was a huge turnoff for people because if we're being honest, if you're carrying a phone with you every day, there will be times when you drop it, get it dusty, and even spill liquids on it. So durability is a must. And I think that this is the main reason why the Z Flip 3 was so revolutionary for the series as a whole. Like when I was using it on a day-to-day -day basis, I did all types of things to it. I spilled some tea on it. I always had it in my very lengthy pockets. And I even dropped it a few times and picked it right back up without it being affected. And this is one of the main reasons why I really enjoyed the Z Flip as my daily phone because I didn't have to stress about breaking it, which took a huge load off my back. And another reason why I think that the Z Flip 3 pioneered the series the way it did was because of the amazing cameras. Now, when we look at the daytime outside photos that I took on the Z Flip 3, we can see that these photos are very comparable to the top tier heavy hitters in the smartphone market. The pictures were very vibrant, bright, and even had the right amount of sharpness, which resulted in me taking some really good looking photos. Even when I took pictures of things like trees or other things of that nature, you can see that the sharpness was more, but it still wasn't to the point where it looked really fake, and I really enjoyed that. The selfie photos were also really great whenever the lighting was good, my skin tone was accurate, my face wasn't too filtered, and my blemishes weren't too harsh, which definitely made me want to take more selfies. And when we look at the daytime inside photos, I would say that there was a dip in quality, but not too much. Like whenever the lighting was good, you could tell that the sharpness was still there. But whenever the lighting wasn't good, I could tell that there was a lot of graininess, which took away from the overall quality of the photo. And when we look at the selfies I took, I will say that it was pretty much the same outcome, but on a worse scale. The graininess was pretty bad and my skin tone would get discolored whenever the lighting wasn't great. Now when it came to the outside night mode pictures, I will say that this is where the pictures were really great. Like right here, you can see that the sharpness was amazing, the added light was amazing, and the natural color was really good. Also, the selfie mode photos were pretty good, but nothing special. The added lighting was still good, but the overall quality wasn't as top tier as the main camera. Now, when we look at the nighttime indoor photos, we can see that this was the hardest environment for the Z Flip 3 to get a good picture in. The graininess was at an all time high whenever I turned down the lights, and the overall quality looked like it came from a different phone. And the camera redeemed itself a little when I turned all the lights on, but it was still a mid-range phone at best and still has a very long way to go. Even when we look at these selfies, I would say that the quality wasn't that great. Even when the lighting was good, it wasn't the best in terms of quality, and it took me a few tries getting a good pic using a selfie camera, so that was a hassle in itself. Now when it comes to video quality on the Z Flip 3, I would say that overall it felt really good, especially when I was able to get good lighting. In the daytime, this was most likely the case, and nighttime was a little harder, but still managed to give me great quality. And to show you guys what I mean, here are some examples of me taking video throughout the day. All right. It's pretty good. Now the next reason as to why I think that the Z Flip 3 is a revolutionary product for foldable smartphones as a whole is because of the amazing screen. And I feel like this screen pushed the barrier for this series as a whole because it was a significant increase in quality that we had ever seen on the last two. I also love the fact that Samsung decided to listen to its consumers and give us a bigger quality outer screen. 
whenever I needed to do some simple things like check the time or even check notifications, all I had to do was pick up my phone and look at it without having to open it. I also love the extra customizations like being able to put your picture as your home screen. I feel like it gave me much more freedom than on last year's version and was great attention to detail. And when we look at the main screen, I again really appreciated the fact that I could be much more careless with it than I was with last year's version. Like right here, you can see that I press on the screen as hard as possible and nothing happens. And even when I drop it, I never really had to worry because I knew that it was durable enough to not get cracked on the first drop. Another thing that I really appreciated was the fact that the crease in the middle wasn't really noticeable at all. Like as you can see here from my point of view, whenever I use my Z Flip, you can hardly notice the crease and this was a huge upgrade from the previous models. But besides the durability of the screen, I also really enjoyed the resolution, the brightness, and even the overall quality of what I was watching. And to show you guys what I mean, here are some examples of me watching videos and playing video games. using the 11 inch iPad Pro for about eight months now. And after my extended time of using it, I pretty much gather all of my opinions that I have about it as a whole. And if I'm being honest, I think that the iPad Pro is the best tablet that you can get in the year of 2022. But I also think that it's way too powerful for its own good. And another reason why I think that the Galaxy Z Flip 3 is the ultimate pioneer for foldable smartphones as a whole is because of the amazing battery. And I would usually get around three to five hours a day of on-screen time when I was using my Z Flip 3. And this was one of the phones where I didn't have to worry if it would last me all day or not. I would usually end my day with about 25% battery left, which was pretty great since I had heavy usage. And I would be doing things like watching YouTube, playing games, and even doing extra work on it. The battery and the durability was the ultimate reason for why I would recommend this phone as a daily driver because when you think about it, those are the two most important things that you need to get through the day. Now another reason why I think that the Galaxy Z Flip 3 is the ultimate pioneer for foldable smartphones is because of the amazing speakers. Now whenever I was watching content, movies, or listening to podcasts, I would say that the speakers are what really got me hooked on not needing headphones as much. Like whenever I was getting ready for work, all I would do was listen to my favorite podcast while getting ready, and the quality of the speakers never failed me. And to show you guys what I mean, here are some examples of different sound tests through the Z Flip speaker. And there it is you guys, my final review on the Galaxy Z Flip 3, five months after its release. And let me know down in the comments, what foldable smartphone do you think pioneered the foldable smartphone series as a whole? Let me know. And if you guys made it to the end of this video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around and don't forget to like the video and subscribe, it'll be very appreciated. And as far as social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.